Welcome back. Um, we are going to pick up right where we left off with JSP Recruiters. Remember, again, we had a client table and that's what we had finished creating. Um, now we need to go in and create the recruiters table, which are really the, the recruiters are the employees. Um, so go ahead and open up your uh, database. And I want to call your attention to this thing that every time you're going to open it, uh, you're going to get the security warning. So click on the options and make sure to click enable this content. So make sure you do this every single time. Uh, unless it's a database from somebody you don't know, in which case it could be dangerous, but for our sake, you're going to open that every single time. So we've got our client table just to re review. You know, we created one with, uh, we got all the different types of data and we could have gone through and added all the information, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a few minutes um, after we create some forms. But what we still need to do, and I'm going to close this table, is create. So we go up to the create tab and we're going to create another table, this time the recruiter table. So just like we did last time, I need to add my different fields, my different types of data that I want to enter. So I want, um, first thing is going to be recruiter number. And you'll find all of this. Uh, you can find it at the beginning of the chapter, but you can also find it kind of nicely displayed at the top of page AC49 in your book. And so we've got recruiter number, last name, first name, street, let's spell that right, street, city, state, postal code, rate, and commission. So we've entered that and, and same as before we're going to go need to go in and change the data types but there is actually another way for us to do this and I want to do it um, from this sheet. So if up at the top make sure you click on the table tools here this data sheet tab and you'll notice obviously commission is going to be a dollar amount and we can actually change the data type right here to currency. So let's do that. Um, we can change the postal code to a number, of course it's going to be a number, and you'll see in a few minutes why uh, we want to do this. Um, we also want to change the rate to a number. Uh, the city, the state, that's going to be text, the street, that's a text, first name of course is text, um, and our recruiter number uh, is actually going to be a number, so let's change that one as well. And if we were to go over to our data sheet view, uh, we need to save it. It's going to prompt us to save it before we can change views, so let's call it recruiter. Again, we'll see we've got, okay, so number, 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 currency. Um, we want to change our primary key to the recruiter number. That's our unique identifier for this table. And we can delete that row so we got rid of the ID number so we look very similar to what we had in the client table and one important key here was thinking back to our one-to-many table um, for every one recruiter so for every one recruiter there were many clients and that's why we included this recruiter number on the client table because we took the primary key from our one table and put it in our many table. That's going to come back really important when we start uh, doing queries and, and um, creating some of the reports from those queries. For the most part it looks like I'm all set, but we do have a small problem. I, I want to go back to the data sheet view on the recruiter, and yes we need to save those changes. And actually I'm just going to go ahead and close this client table so I don't have too many things open at the top. Um, but as I start to enter my data for this first recruiter, so it's recruiter number was 21, Carrie, Alyssa, first name was at 261, Pointer, in Turin, Colorado. And the postal code is 80416, and the rate is 0 0.10. Oops. Did you notice what just happened there? I'm going to do it again so you can watch it. Maybe I should even slow-mo it in the uh, video editing. I don't think I'm going to bother with that, but 0 0.10, I hit enter and it changes it to zero. We seem to have an issue here because we really want it to be 0 0.10. 
And it really goes back to, if we go to our design view, what do we have for our number? And remember, our number defaults to a long integer. 0 0.10 is not an integer. 0 is an integer. In fact, 0 is the integer that's closest to 0 0.10, so it defaults to, and goes to the uh, 0. So we really need to change this type. Um, and we can change it either really a single or a double. I'm just going to go with single. The format, we've got a bunch of different styles. Let's do a fixed style, so it's got a fixed number of decimal places. And let's turn it to two decimal places so it looks exactly like it does in our book. And then let's go back to the data view. It's going to prompt us to save. And now if I enter in my rate 0.10, it'll stay as 0 0.10. And of course I want to put in the commission which is 17,600 and whoops when I hit enter it jumped me down to the next line but you can see it turned it into currency and it looks nice. At this point I could go on and enter all the data for all of my recruiters but I want to stop here with this table and I'm going to close it and notice I closed it and it's fine. Everything is still there. We didn't lose any data. Um, I'm going to close it and I'm going to create some forms now. So this is really kind of the next step. Uh, again, we go up to that Create tab. And for our purposes, we're going to use a split form. Uh, it'll display the niceness. It'll kind of show us what we're doing. Um, but when I click on Split Form, it will design this form for me. And if I wanted to, I could go in and you know make some adjustments to how big things are. Um, I could move things around a little bit to make my form look a little different. This is that layout view. Um, I don't want to make that any smaller, but I do want to make these a little smaller. So anyway, I can make a couple changes to my form, make it look a little nicer. And then either I can come down here and go to the form view or I can do it up in the top left and go to form view. And now I have a form that you could imagine um, a secretary or somebody taking phone calls. You could use this to enter data. And I can just hit enter or I can use my arrow keys to go between the different fields. And I can hit enter when I get to the bottom of one and I can start entering another uh, recruiter. So 24 Reeves Camden and I can use this form it's a much nicer way to enter data in many respects so 3135 Brill in Denton Colorado postal code 80412 rate 0.10 and commission is 19,900 notice I don't have to put the dollar sign in there I can just enter it and you'll hopefully have noticed that while we were doing that it was entering data down here for us. So it was putting the data right into our table. At this time I'm going to actually close this. It's going to ask me to save it and yes I do want to save it. And it's a form. I can call it recruiter because it's the recruiter form. And notice I have it over here now. And if I enter it, it's going to bring up the first record and I have this form that I can use. Um, down at the bottom I can navigate between records so I can go to the next record and the next record is a blank one. Um, there's also this button right here with the little star or sun, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I click on that, that'll bring me to the next blank record. Um, but I wanted to show a couple things here why we spent that time um, specifying what type of data we put in every field. It just helps prevent some un intentional mistakes as you are uh, entering data. Fernandez, um, Jamie, if I were to come over here to the postal code and write Tim is the, wait let's do the man, I'm gonna get an error message and it says the value I've entered isn't valid for this field because it's not a number. I really need to put a number in there. So it helps prevent a couple errors so let's see, it was 80380. But notice this too, if I try to go to another record right now, I get that null value again. 
you might remember that from last time, that null value, remember the recruiter number has to be filled out. We cannot put a record in here without filling out the that primary key, that recruiter number. So now I've created a form. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and close out of this. And you'll notice that the information I entered on that form comes into my table when I open my table. I'm going to do the same thing for a client table. I am going to, again, I don't need to open it. I just need to highlight it at the, and I'm going to click create. I'm going to do a split form, and it's going to create this nice little form for me. Um, I might go in and do a little bit of editing because I want it to look a little bit nicer. Um, but there's my, my form. In fact, at this point, I'm content with it. I'm going to close it. I'm going to save the changes and I'm going to call it my client form. And later I'm going to come back. I'm going to use that form to enter all that data from, uh, in your book again, it's on page AC41. And I'm going to enter all the data for all of my, um, all of my clients. So 134 central, et cetera. So I will leave you at this point to fill in all of the data. And when we join next time, we will be adding a few uh, reports that we can quickly run off. So go ahead, take this time, enter all that data, and join me next time for a little more access fun.